Hey everybody, if we haven't met before, my name is Xi Xiao. I'm the content creator at salesforceway.com website. Because of my role, I get the chance to meet a lot of Salesforce developers and Salesforce experts. One of the things they really convinced me as a Salesforce developer, I do need to learn DX well. DX sometimes is also named Salesforce CLI, sometimes it's also called SFDX. They are equally the same thing. If you haven't learned DX before, was it because you didn't have time in the work or you were just procrastinating heavily like I did, or you were just a little bit afraid of command line interface? Actually, none of that really matters because in this video, we're going to learn together about DX. We're going to have a quick jump start and learn together. Let's dive in. Hey, welcome back. The first step actually we really need to do is to install the SFDX command line interface. There are mainly two ways to install it. The first way is to head over to the Salesforce CLI homepage and get to the download page. As you can see, the download page already contains three different installation media for Mac OS, for the Windows, and for Linux. According to your operating system, you download the corresponding one, extract, and install them. That's as simple as that. However, I'd highly recommend as a developer, you start to use the second way, which is to use the npm package to install this command line. Why do I recommend to use the npm package? If you haven't heard about npm before, it's the Node.js package management system. As we are getting closer and closer to the mainstream front-end development, we are using a lot of JavaScript, we are using the Lightning Web component, so actually, the Node.js is the must-have tool for Salesforce developers as well. So if you have already have Node.js installed, if you type Node-V, you can see that I've already have the uh, version 10 installed. Once you have a Node.js installed, what you do need to do is to just type npm install global sfdx-cli. Then the npm package would start install the sfdx command line tool for you automatically. Okay, once the npm package installation command was done successfully, now if you type sfdx, you can see that the command line is already available for us. So congratulations, we have done the installation of the first step. Once we have installed successfully the SFDX command line in our local environment, the next step is naturally to establish connections with different Salesforce works and uh, interact with them. In this video, I'm going to just share the SFDX cheat sheet that I have created in the GitHub. It contains a long list of different type of SFDX commands. These commands are commonly used in my work. So I put it online and that it has gained a little bit popularities from other people as well. So in this video, we're going to quickly just uh, use the most commonly used commands. So, but I will definitely put this link to this cheat sheet down below in the video description. If you want a reference to that later, then definitely do that after the video. So the first one we want to do is I copy over the first command line. It's F sfdx force column auth column web column login. As you can see, it's a very long, tedious uh, command line. So that's why I create the cheat sheet because it's not so easy to remember all of these uh, its typings. So what this command line really does is once I hit enter, it will pop open a browser type with the Salesforce login page. And I can put my username and password into the login page and then SFDX will automatically store the authentication in your local environment for the later commands uh, reference. So let's hit enter and you can see a window is popped up and I then I use the developer edition credential 
then it successfully logged in. Once it's logged in, I can safely close the tab. And if we come back, the SFDX tells us it's successfully authorized. So what does it really mean here is that SFDX has already stored this authentication in your local environment for future SFDX command to interact with this work, this developer edition work specifically in this demonstration. We do not need to input the username and password anymore. So how do we verify it's already stored successfully? We need to copy over another command, hit enter. As you can see, it tells us one additional org was connected. The username of that org is this, shishafinland at gmail.com. There's a org ID and there's the alias. It's called DevHub. If you don't know what this alias really means, you can go back to check. Actually, the first command, I have a dash A, DevHub. What does that really mean? So here is a really pro tip. For any SFDX command line, you don't know what the parameters really means, I highly recommend you copy it over and use dash H. This is a really important tip. You can see it explains what the command line really does and what parameters it accepts. As we did use the dash D, it says uh, once we log in, successfully authenticate it, then we will use this Salesforce org as a default org for the future uh, interactions. And then we also use the dash A, which means to interact with the org, we can set an alias name for future. So the dash H command is super important. Okay, so now once we have already logged in, as you can see on the command line, what if we want to log out of uh, this org? We can use this command line. And what if we want to log out all the connected orgs as we can authenticate in multiple orgs? Then we can use this command line to log out all of them. And there are all different sorts of SFDX. And I have the explanation uh, on top of each command as well. So I definitely recommend you to check to this cheat sheet later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one example is to use the SFDX force org open to demonstrate what does it mean. So if we hit H to check what this command really does, actually it means we're going to open this uh, Salesforce org in our browser. So you can see this is a explanation. And in order to know which Salesforce work we want to interact with, because we might have multiple works authentication stored in the SFDX. So then we need to use the dash U, which was the alias, if you still remember. Our alias is DevHub. So this, and there were examples at the bottom as well. So now I get the hang of this command line. What I'm going to do. Oh, sorry, what I'm going to do is to type sfdx force open dash u dev hub because I know I have this dev hub authentication stored in my local environment and now I want to open specifically for this Salesforce work in my browser. So I type this, I would expect as you can see the my default browser opens this work for me. So in this case, once you authenticated in, in the SFDX, it means you no longer need to type in your username and password anymore in the future. Assuming you have connected with multiple uh, different Salesforce work, and in the future you do not need to type every single one of the username and password anymore. So this is about how the establish the connections and how to interact with the different works. And uh, for all the SFDX, pay attention to this dash U command. So each time when you need to pull or push the metadata, or you need to interact specifically with uh, a Salesforce work, you have to use the dash U to specify that work. Otherwise, it will always go to the default one, which you have set 
uh, previously. Hey, that's it for today. A short video can only take you so far. If you are really serious about learning DX, I'd highly recommend you to check this SFDX cheat sheet we just mentioned in this video. I'm going to put a link down below in the video description so that you can take it away with you. You can practice those commands in your daily work. You know, the more you practice them, the better you are armed with this tool. So with that out of the way, I hope you really enjoyed this video, you get something out of it. Consider subscribing to this channel and smash that like button below. So keep it up and see you next time. Shoo.